the biggest thing we, we usually start getting is, okay, I, my voicemails aren't being received by my, by my end users. What can we do to troubleshoot? So what we set up in the sites is kind of like the, the basic setup for the SMTP relay. But on your actual Shortel server, if you log into, you know, server 2008, server 2012, server 2003, if you still have some of those, everything is going to be controlled by the IIS or Internet Information Services. The 6.0 manager is what it, what controls the SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol. It's what packages those, you know, when Shortel packages the email, it's what sends it out. So what we have to do is remote desktop into your Shortel server, go to your control panel, administrative tools, and then you'll have two IISs. You'll have the regular internet information services, which is what controls like the shoreware director web page, stuff like that. Then you have your, your 6.0 manager, which is what controls the outbound, you know, SMTP. So I'm going to right click on that virtual server and go to properties so I can get into my configuration settings. And what this properties allows us to do is this allows us to manually override or and create custom configurations for SMTP. So on the delivery tab is all you really need to worry about is on the delivery tab, you have outbound security. So if you have... Google Apps and you want to authenticate to Google Google Apps using an email address that you've set up for sending, you know, email from a a multifunction printer or something like that. Under outbound security, you can put in a username and a password to authenticate to Google Apps or, you know, a third-party mail server or even just an internal mail server if you require authentication for security purposes. Under outbound connections, this is where you can change the port number. By default, all SMTP traffic is going to be on port 25. But the same thing, Google Apps, I think, requires like port 587 or, you know, a, a weird port number. So that way, for security purposes, they change the port number. So it's, it's harder to be, you know, uh, for people to get access to your accounts or something like that or, or to hack it. So you can change the port number and outbound connections. We're going to really focus on the advanced tab, or the advanced button. Advanced button is where we control where we send those messages. So the advanced delivery gives you the maximum hop count. I've never seen anybody have a problem where you know where the mail has to hop more than 15, so they usually leave that alone. Your fully qualified domain name should match to whatever the name of your short tail server is, so you shouldn't have to modify that. The one you're going to really be looking at is the smart host field, and this is the manual override from whatever we put in the sites page, this is the permanent manual override for that. We're setting it up on the Windows server side. So whatever we put in sites is going to be ignored if we put something different in here. So you can see in here that we're pointing our SNP relay directly at our Office 365 setup. So you can see Inflocom, Dashcom, that's our unique identifier from 365. The mail.protection.outlook.com is standard for anybody, any other customer using 365. This allows us to, to do mail forwarding to our internal domains within 365 without authentication. So if you're allowing employees to, to forward email out to like Gmail accounts, something like that, Office 365 won't necessarily allow that. But if you're only sending to e if you're only allowing them to send emails to their internal email addresses, you can use a smart host similar to what we are for Office 365 users without having to build on your own email relay server or something in-house. The checkbox right underneath is very important. If you have multiple Shortel servers or any Shortel V switches in production, because without that checkbox, what, the, what we're telling the Shortel server is send all SMTP traffic to the smart host. Well, that includes any messages we're sending between two servers, or if we record a new auto attendant, I need to be able to send that auto attendant greeting to another server or another vSwitch, or even a music on a hold file, I need to be able to send to another server. Without that checkbox, we're gonna send those messages to the 365 server. 365 is gonna say, I have no idea what you want me to do with this, and it's just gonna discard it. So now we have if without that checkbox, I have servers that can't synchronize with each other because we're forwarding all that traffic to the 365 server and it has no idea what to do with it. So we want to make sure that's checked. Anytime you have multiple short tail servers 
or V switches, or I recommend just checking it in case you are going to expand down the road. It's already checked. So we, we hit the OK button there. We've got our setup now manually overrided from what we set up in the sites page. Now we simply need to stop and start our SMTP server to, for the changes to take effect. So from where we hit the properties, we just simply hit the little stop button, which you can see you know, in the, the little screenshot on the right, there's a, little, there's a black stop button. It takes about 15 seconds or so to stop the SMTP service. Once it's stopped, the little play button, which is grayed out, will be available. You simply click the play button, another 15 seconds or so later, SMTP is restarted. The great thing about SMTP restarts, there's no effect on your end users. You can restart this during business hours, after hours, the only thing this is controlling is email notifications out of the outside of the out of the short tail system. So you can do this these changes in this troubleshooting during business hours without affecting any of your end users. Okay, so we got we got it all manually set up. So now the question is, is well, how do we know it's working on your short tail server? If you were to go to the C drive. And it's definitely the C drive, even if you have the short tail software installed to the D drive, the E drive, the S drive, this information is always going to be on the C drive. And it's in the INET pub directory. The INET pub is, is a directory for IIS, for all the internal websites, you know, the SMTP, stuff like that. The INET pub directory is what contains all of that information in it. Then I'm going to go to the mail root. Mail root is everything to do with the email capabilities on the server. <clears throat> and we'll get four different files in here or four, four different folders in here. The first one we have is the bad mail folder. Bad mail folder is gonna contain anything that we tried to send out a few times and we either couldn't connect to the smart host or the smart host rejected our email. We're gonna dump it into the bad mail folder. So the bad mail folder, if your system's working properly, should have nothing in it. And you can see in my screenshot, my bad mail folder hasn't been updated since October 17th of last year, which means there's been no failed messages in our system for almost for 10 months. Your drop and your pickup, those are the, what the system uses to prep emails um, to be able to get ready to send out. The Q folder on the bottom is the important one. If you open up the Q folder, these are messages waiting to be sent. So when you open up your Q folder, anything that's waiting to go out, to the, we, they stay in there, and then once they, they send that message out to the SMTP relay and they get a confirmation back, it will empty out of the queue messages. So once again, if your system is working properly, there should be nothing in the queue folder. If you are seeing stuff in the queue folder, that's when we know we're having an SMTP issue. So we can, sometimes customers will go to this queue folder before they do the previous SMTP settings and say, oh yeah, there's definitely some messages saved in here. Let's go ahead and make those, make, let's change our SMTP setting on the server because we just changed our email service provider or we migrated to a new email server and that's probably what broke you know, our email delivery. So we can look at the queue to see if there's anything in there, make our changes, come back to the queue, refresh the page and see if the messages are gone out of there a typical message should stay in the queue folder for less than 30 seconds. So if I get a new voicemail and I have the queue folder open, I should see a message go into there and then, you know, leave there. And that's how you can typically know that it's, it's working fine. If you have messages that stay in there, they will stay in there for days, you know, some customers, you know, for, for months before they go to the bad mail. It just depends on how, how often the, their SP server allows us to retry to send those messages but they will end up in the bad mail folder if the, you know, we're unsuccessful sending them after a few times. The good news is, is anything in the queue folder, when we make our changes, they'll be sent out still. So, th so sometimes if they're really old, some customers will go through the queue folder and they'll delete everything older than like you know, a couple of weeks. Otherwise, we, we've had customers who had a thousand messages in their queue folder and when we set it, when we, we, we fix the SMTP settings, a thousand email notifications go out, even if those voicemails were for a message left 30 days ago. So that's kind of the, the thing to be, be aware of is that it will send out whatever's in there. So sometimes you might want to do some cleanup if there's stuff that's a little bit older in there. If you're not you know, concerned about that, we'll leave them in there. 
and then your bad mail folder. Anything that ends up in the bad mail folder, for all intents and purposes, you consider you should consider those notifications lost. It's for for the most part, it's not worth the the amount of time you have to modify on the files to make them ready to put back into the queue. So for most customers, I just I recommend that anything in the bad mail folder, you just delete them. When we if we do any modification to this, empty the bad mail folder so that next time you come into the system, you can see okay the bad mail folder is empty since the last time I made the modifications. I don't have any errors um, sitting in the bad mail folder. I'm only really interested in the queue folder. The other thing that the queue folder is useful for is showing communication between servers. So if I'm if I record a new auto attendant message, the server says, oh, let me send this auto attendant to my other servers. It'll package the, the WAV file, it'll drop it into the queue folder, and it'll send it out to our additional servers. The other thing we use a lot is when we're, we're setting up new voicemail servers. So we wanna bring on a secondary voicemail server in Seattle and move all our Seattle users to that voicemail server. I get the server set up and then in my shoreboard director, I make a big change and I migrate my users to that to the new server. Well, all of those users' voicemails that are stored on my on my server are gonna be dropped into the queue folder and sent one at a time over to the new voicemail server so they can be stored for the, you know, on that server for the user to check their voicemail locally. And anytime you do that in the short system, it gives you a pop-up that says, don't restart either server until the queue folder is empty. Because if we restart the server and there's a whole bunch of messages in that queue folder, you've just deleted all of those users' voicemail messages because they won't be stored on the current server or the new server anymore because they were in the queue folder and they weren't anywhere else. So that's the big key is to kind of, if you do a big mailbox transition, we want to make sure that queue folder is, you know, empties itself out before we do any, you know, any server reboots or anything like that. <laughs> so one other option you do have that we've been getting more and more questions about is the capability to have voicemails audio transcribe to email. And one of the new capabilities we have with the Shortel Connect platform is we have Shortel Scribe. And you can, it's a subscription service that you subscribe to on a per user basis. So if you only needed a couple of users or maybe doctors, you know, something like that, where that you wanted their voicemails to transcribe the email, you can sign up for Scribe for those users and all their email is forwarded to Shortel Scribe. They, it gets transcribed and emailed back to that, to that end user. And, you know, and I've tested it. And if you you receive a you receive a email and you're like man I can't quite understand what this one part of the voicemail is you simply re reply back to to scribe and the second time you reply back it actually gets transcribed by a, a, a live body the first time that it's it's automated the second time uh, you know somebody will actually transcribe it and send it back to you you know so when I was testing with it it was about eighty percent accurate which is pretty good you know compared to most you know most most voice stuff. And then if I had to respond back, you know, then, then I got it back the second time. And it was a pretty cool, you know, feature that, that we were doing some testing. And so we have some customers that are, you know, interested in that capability. And it's pretty affordable to do it on a, on a per user basis if you're, you know, if you need a few, a few different users uh, set up on it. <laughs>